Hello everyone, it is me, Plea, and I have decided to come at you with a very, very special video series today. I think we're going to be doing this in two or three parts, and it's going to be a very deep dive tutorial on how to play ROM control. We're going to have no yelling of the name, no jokes, no silliness of any kind today. If you want that, go find some other video. Today, this is for the real ones, the real Ron gamers out there, the people who have seen this deck in maybe the streams or the replays or the videos, or they know of the legend of Ron, 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 Ron 5, and they want to go from absolute noob to wizard chess grandmaster 6900 420 ELO. So, we're going to get right on into it. Part one is going to be about how to build your Ron deck uh, and talking about your decisions and how they fit into playing your Ron deck. Uh, part two will probably be about sideboarding and probably talk more about uh, variations of the deck. And then I'll probably go through some games in another video and try to apply that knowledge in a more serious way. Now, why am I making this video now? I've been playing the deck a lot recently and a lot of different variations. I did top with it at some point as well, and I almost topped the last FLC with this list here, which I'll probably go over at some point. I've had a lot of fun doing it. I think there's a lot of potential with this deck. It has a lot of good cards in it, so, I mean, not surprising. But the deck is extremely, extremely hard, and I think has an air of indecipherability. So I wanted to for my own selfish shake, go ahead and demystify that. Go ahead and get some folks interested in the deck and playing. Because if we've seen anything at this point, it's that once a deck starts getting played, it gets iterated on. And once a deck starts getting iterated on, it does better. And you'll see as we go, this deck definitely has some ways to go. Because it has some cards that just need more reps in. Just need to get a little more time in the desert sunlight, if you know what I'm saying. Just to get to take a look at how well they work together. So the more folks who are playing the deck, the more folks who are trying, the more folks who are having fun, for starters, because this deck's awesome, but it'll also really just make sure that the deck gets to be its best shape, because I think you can definitely compete with the best of them, probably a solid tier 1.5 deck, if not a tier 1 deck eventually. So, I hope you subscribe, because there will be more videos like this. Keep your eyes peeled, another big video is coming. Finally recorded the script for all of that. Very excited to get started on editing. Jace, thank you so much for your patience, but without further ado... Let's do some Ronning. So, what I have right here on the screen is what I'd say is core Ron cards and options. So we're just going to go through these today, explain why they're here, why they're so important, what's negotiable, what's not, and what can be added uh, to your own taste, and what those will bring to your deck and their play. So, starting off with the most obvious cards, Cyber Jar and Morphing Jar. Deck doesn't work without them. It's the whole point of Ron control. What you're doing here is we're basically taking a Chaos Turbo deck, and we're going to take out most of the answers to opponent's threats and replace them with Book of Tayu. And uh, we're going to take out our spell and trap removal um, from a normal turbo deck and we're going to replace it with Giant Trunade so we can get rid of their stuff and go for these big blowout turns while also kind of pretending to be Chaos Turbo in the meantime. So with that being the case, we most obviously also need Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning because this card kills people and is very good in Chaos decks. We also are going to need three Magician of Faith. That is right, we're going to play three Magician of Faith. And we're going to do this for a couple of reasons, but it's definitely three for my testing. Reason number one, they are very important to the extension of our Ronbos. So Ronbo is going to be the term we use for when we've activated a Morphing Jar and a Cyber Jar, and we are doing so with intent to kill our opponent in that turn. If we do not, we're going to have to assume that our opponent can kill us on their turn unless we make a very specific decision. We'll get into it later. This is absolutely one of the hardest decks in the format, for sure. Whether or not it's good or fun, it is also one of the hardest to play at its best. Because once you make that commitment to the Ronbo, you have to find a line, or you have to find some way to survive, so you have to have a very intimate knowledge of your deck and the possibilities with your opponent's deck at basically all times. So starting off with that principle and keeping that in mind going forward, when we get a Magician of Faith off of a Cyber Jar, along with a Book of Tayu, we are in a very good position. So reason one for three Magician of Faith is we want to maximize that pos uh, possibility. Reason number two is because we want to make sure we have two in our hand because we do not want one knocked and then to lose them both at the same time. If our Magician of Faith gets Noblemaned, it's pretty bad for us. We want to be getting spells back. It is very important. It does help a lot for our Ronbos. 
um, and it does a lot of good stuff for us, like in any Chaos deck, but especially this one, especially with the Book of Taiyu, it's really helpful, and we played the Book of Moon. So, moving on in that same principle, Dark Magician of Chaos, I at this point feel that in the standard Ron deck, Dark Magician of Chaos is absolutely a mainstay. Uh, when I first received the original list from Ron, 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 Ron 5, the legend himself, this was in it. I had my doubts. I did not want to play it. I found uh, him too hard to summon, just looking at the list, and I took him straight out, and this was very much incorrect to do. This card being a spell reproduction for 800 life points with a beater on top of it is crazy cuckoo crack balls. And if you have Giant True Nade, it's very reliable and easy to do that and then get another monster, or to have gotten a monster and then to later get your Demok. So Demok is absolutely amazing. If you're using other monsters like Gravekeeper Spy, you'll see it's really easy to get him out, or at least easy enough. I don't find him to be too much of a hampering. He also is very good for our turn one sacks. So I'm saying he is absolutely a mainstay. Then Thunder Dragon is here, of course, as well. A mainstay in Chaos Turbo, a mainstay in most empty jar decks. We are playing Graceful Charity, we are playing our upstarts, and we're playing card destruction, so this card is just as good as it is in Turbo in basically every way or shape or form, except that we're not playing Regeki Break to Guess. So, we got Sangan as well, this one is a no-brainer, we want to get our jars, it quickly gets our jars, and then lastly we have Tribe Infecting Virus, because it is a pretty easy and convenient Lightning Vortex for all intents and purposes, and also a pretty good attacking body, so... We main tribe almost always, but we're not maining breaker. In fact, most versions of this deck aren't going to main breaker. We don't really need that kind of two for one aspect the way that a Chaos Turbo deck or most other decks will. Most of the time, that will still be praying most of their chainable traps or whatever the hell else. People aren't bringing in Sakuretsu armor against Ron Control. They're just not. So we don't play breaker. Next up, we have Book of Taiyu. We're going to play it at three in this build. You can technically do two. I recently topped an event with Ron Control Control, I called it and we played one. That, I'd say, was very much an exception. This card is going to be at three in just about every deck because it is what we use to make the combo go off. We are going to do two Book of Moon, however, as mandatory. I just basically bubbled with a deck playing two. The more I played it, the more I realized that if you get a hand with just a bunch of these cards, you aren't doing nothing. But you absolutely need these maxed out because you're really not safely going off without them. This one is a little more arguable because generally we're not winning the game off just a Morphing Jar. We don't need that many that bad. We've got the Trinity next, obviously. We are playing Delinquent Duo. We are absolutely going to play Delinquent Duo. This may seem weird in what is essentially a combo deck, but we are playing three Magician of Faith and three Book of Taiyu. And if we can do a three for four on turn one with potential follow-up, Hey, we just created a non-game on turn one, especially if we can also go for Demok into Duo. That's a possibility. There's just a lot of possibility for Sack in this deck. We just want to maximize the potential. Duo is a stupid card. Getting to Duo multiple times is incredibly stupid, so it's what we do. Card destruction, absolutely essential. Kind of basically one of our most important win cons in the deck, secretly or not so secretly. Obviously, you're able to mill with it. Milling with it is a very, very important but on top of that, it helps you find everything you need. Once you get that big Cyber Jar uh, activation and you're going for your Ronbo, whatever half of your deck you're holding in your hand, if you want to get the other half, you're going to use a Card Destruction. Looping Card Destruction is also why we really like having 3 Faith and Demok and the 3 Book, because that is very much a win con of this game. One of the coolest parts about Ron Control, on top of the fact that you need to know your own entire deck, and on top of the fact that you need to know your opponent's deck basically almost completely, is that you also have every win con at your disposal. You can basically lock your opponent out of the game, you can mill your opponent out of the game, or you can just OTK them. So there's a lot of possibility there. We're going to play Upstart Goblin because we want the draw power. It's really good. We're playing a lot of things that make the draw power better. Just keep moving through your deck. Giant True Nade, I currently have, it says here, it's three and a heavy storm. Basically, if you are playing this specific card, which we will get to in a moment, you're going to want to go three True Nade. Otherwise, you can go two True Nade and a heavy storm. I don't recommend going the full four. I don't think this is necessary. The only time when heavy storm is a little tough is if you have these cards that we're about to get to and you don't want to blow your own up, which happens a bit. So I personally enjoy the three True Nade, even when I'm not playing Slump, but Heavy Storm is a very good card, so if you want to just give it a go, it's probably a little easier. It probably won't punish you all that much. It might be better for beginners even to probably go one of these and two of these, so keep that in mind. Then we've got our Premature Snatch and Ring. 
we are very much going to be keeping close track of these cards and their placement in our deck because they are going to be our most important OTK cards. Premature Burial, in particular, I find myself wanting this card very, 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 very often um, because it is our Democ, it is our Tribe Infecting Virus, it can be one of our jars if we have a Book of Moon, we can recur it with Giant Trunade, so it can be both of these at once, so that's huge. Snatch Deal, no-brainer, just might win a game on its own. Ring of Destruction with BLS, that might win a game on its own. It's also great removal, so that's all important. And then my last mandatory card is going to be Desert Sunlight, because getting our Ronbo off is so important that we want four Book of Tayu, and Desert Sunlight can do that for us uh, faux fiddly fine. So, those are the essentials. And then, in addition, essential with an asterisk, you're going to need to choose some combination of these guys right here to be your darks, and you're going to want to play somewhere between five and seven of them. Which ones you choose will have a great effect on your gameplay, mostly in the early game, and then they will have a lesser impact on your late game. So which ones you choose matter a lot based off of your meta. So let's go through the merits of each one. Mystic Tomato. Obviously, Mystic Tomato is the only one that will directly funnel into your jars if you want it to. It can search out Sangan, and then you can search for your jar, or it can search out Cyber Jar, and then you can book it down, and you can activate it, which is great. You can also search out any of these other guys in a pinch, which is very lovely as well. The main problem with Mystic Tomato is that Chaos Turbo most often can ignore it for a very long time. So, if you are playing in a meta that is mostly Chaos Turbo, and the rest of your build is not very focused on Chaos Turbo, this card is probably not going to be your best option because they won't give you a lot of opportunities to crash with it. But there might still be merit to it. I am personally a big fan. I am yet to play a build without it, but there very much could be one. Next up, Gravekeeper Spy. So Gravekeeper Spy is a less likely pick for some folks, but I have been using it for quite some time when I was really grinding out this deck. And the reason why is because I was playing it when I first started playing Dark Magician of Chaos. And it should be pretty obvious how these cards go together. If you manage to get your spies to resolve on the field at the same time and make it to your main phase, you can just tribute summon Demok. Tribute summoning Demok is nutso mcbutso, because you can get back any sorts of arrays of great crazy spells, and getting back spells is good in GOAT format. Who knew? Um, it also is really good against Warrior. If you are expecting a very Warrior-heavy meta, you can probably cause your opponent a massive headache by having these six be your two darks. Um, I don't see them getting through that all that easily, although it's possible they can, so these are good picks. Then there's also Dekoichi. Dekoichi also is the best one for moving things along. If you really want to just keep churning through your deck, then Tomato and Dekoichi are going to probably be your best pick. Dekoichi is also best when you do make the choice to play the third Book of Moon, because Dekoichi turns it into an upstart goblin, and that is a technique I learned from Ron himself. And lastly, but not leastly, the new tech, the new hotness, the one I got from MMF and Nano most recently, was Night Assailant paired with Rock Bombardment. So, you can just play Night Assailant alone. It's a fine card. You can do certainly a lot with it. It helps your graceful charities. It can help get you a lot of stuff back and get back your jar. When it is paired with Rock Bombardment, now, all of a sudden, you have an archetypal Foolish Burial, which is uh, pretty good. In the ways that Tomato fails to get through the Chaos matchup, this combination shreds right through it perfectly. So you can dump your Tomato, or you can dump your Jar, and then you can go ahead and discard it with Night Assailant, and then you'll have your Jar back. You'll be in position, and most likely you've gotten to a stage of the game where if they had a Dust Shoot, they already used it, or you can get your hand to be smaller. Another card I forgot to put here, which goes great with this, and it's what I just tried, is Monster Reincarnation. If you dump something with Rock Bombardment, and then you Monster Reincarnation with Night Assailant, you get back two monsters. So it's basically like a two for two, but a really good two for two. Like, that's a crazy good two for two. Imagine getting back a BLS and a Cyber Jar at the same time. You're probably winning a game you were losing before, so that's pretty great. Um, this is especially good for Rombos, because if you get Card Destruction and BLS in your opening hand, you're going to cry if Monster Reincarnation is not in your deck. This is another card that Ron 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 5 originally had that I doubted, but he was certainly right about it. Um, so I highly recommend it. I'm not going to call it one of my mandatory picks, but it is certainly a strong pick. So, going and putting all of that together, some possible combinations of these Dark Monsters can be... Three Mystic Tomato and three Gravekeeper Spy for a really strong defensive stocky build. It'll go really slow and really long, but you'll eventually be able to do your combos in the later game. If you want to keep moving things along, you can go ahead for Tomato and Dekoichi. 
if you want to go a more anti-turbo route, probably a combination of Decoichi, Knight Assailant, and maybe Rock Bombardment would be good. So you're constantly drawing cards, you can constantly get back your Decoichi, that's a possibility. If you want to potentially do a good Chaos Turbo impression, if you're used to your Chaos Turbo cards, you can probably go for Spy, Decoichi, and One Knight Assailant as an opportunity. Um, or you could go for Tomato, Decoichi, and One Knight Assailant, and that was the classic Ron configuration. So again, that's something that is a little meta-relevant, a little meta-dependent, also your playstyle relevant, and probably just needs further testing overall. So I really hope folks will take a look at that, see which combination of those monsters they want best. Um, after that, we get the final thing, which is the extenders and the finishers. So up until now, I'd consider everything I've seen to be almost completely essential for all of the builds, but you'll see that there are three slots missing. Technically, there are four slots missing, right? So around there, three or four slots that you need to fill in your Ron deck in order to complete it. So in my sideboard here, I've placed down from most recommended to least recommended a couple of possibilities on what could go here, and I'll explain now why you might want them. So, of course, we must start with the Heavy Slump, the classic Ron combo ridiculousness. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, they shuffle their entire hand into the deck, then draw two cards. This card basically is like a safety valve for your Ronbo, because whether or not you complete your combo, if you activate this card, you're going to end up with more cards than your opponents. If you're going to play this card, you're probably going to want a third Book of Moon, because it will really help with your defense, because you're going to be assuming you're passing the turn back to your opponent, and Heavy Slump doesn't necessarily seal the game off. Um, I've come to not play in the current build I am, but I'd say it's definitely something you're going to want if you're just trying to have fun, if you're just trying to learn the deck, or if you are playing a slower build or a more controlling build in the end. Second option is Chaos Sorcerer. When playing Chaos Sorcerer, you're not going to play more than one. It is uh, actually better in a warrior meta or in the sideboard uh, than just as a general thing. It's not like a general pick. The deck doesn't need it to kill. But if you're playing a decent amount of darks, if you want to transform into something that has to fight against Warrior, if you're playing anything like that and you want to get more OTK focused, then you can go for Sorcerer. You don't really need Sorcerer and Slump in the same deck. Uh, Sorcerer might also help with summoning Demok. He also can be another brick in your hand, so be careful about that. Next up, third Book of Moon. Um, if you want to go a little harder on your M-Jar combos, or if you want to go a little harder on your defense, if you're playing a little more controlling, you can go ahead for that. But I wouldn't play this card if you're playing too many of these other extenders because it is a dead card. So keep in mind, Book of Moon is a dead card, even if it can facilitate a lot and be careful with it. Mind Control. Let's talk about Mind Control. So Mind Control, you're only going to play if you're expecting to see a lot of turbo. And I would actually only main one copy because especially now with these days, most people know what it does and why this deck would play it. If you don't know, the reason why you play a mind control is for something called Goat Rule 14. I explained this in my last Ron deck tech, I'll go ahead and do it again. If you activate mind control, and you steal something that was summoned to your opponent's side of the field on your turn, you are still entitled to a position change. That means that Cyberjar, that summons a Magician of Faith in face-down defense to your opponent's side of the field, that's a free Magician of Faith for you right now. You just book a Tayo to Magician of Faith on your own field, basically, which is fantastic. Shallow Grave, same thing. So you can actually control that sometimes if you know it's the only thing. You can get it to get him back, and then you can go ahead and mind control it. That's a free spell. And maybe that spells Tayu, and maybe you got back Cyberjar, and all of a sudden, you're back in the game, which is why Magician of Faith is very good, and why mind control might be very good too. It's also removal for chaos monsters, so that's pretty relevant, that's pretty nice. These days, it's not as good, because most opponents, if they see it, will just put their monsters in attack position, because they know you are playing Book of Moon, though. So there is a possibility to just book it down and get something back anyway, if it's an option, if you need it. So, very much worth considering, especially in the sideboard, if not in the main. And speaking of, the next one is to do goat control shit. So... We're going to talk a lot more about this in the next episode of this series because when we're playing scapegoat, we're going to be slowing the game down and we're going to be putting more focus into what our opponent's doing. I'd say that is absolutely level two of the deck. Level one is going to be just trying to focus on our Ronbos, but obviously having that safety valve and letting to pass to your opponent's turn and also being able to defend yourself better in the early game so you can get to your Ronbos later, that's all great. Creature Swap is another way to deal some extra damage. It's also a pseudo Book of Taiyu if you want to just go ahead and give your opponent a jar and then attack over it on an open board. That's an activation, so that's great. Now, moving into the dicier zone, we have the Shallow Grave. So, the Shallow Grave is going to just be a simple combo extender. You can go ahead, get a jar back, 
and tie you it again and keep your combo going. I found this to be one of the worst cards. I'm not saying one of the worst cards. That's, uh, you have a bit of a ways to go here with possibilities, but I haven't found it very necessary. If you're doing this, you start kind of like fiending for it, praying for it in times you wouldn't otherwise get it. And somehow it's easier to get Heavy Slump to go off without a Ronbo than to make Shower Grave useful before your Ronbo. So I put it a little lower on the list. But it absolutely is an option, especially if you want to play multiples. If you want to play this deck more like you're doing an Empty Jar Impression, it might be good. I don't recommend it. Next up, we have Jar of Greed. Jar of Greed, I played recently two copies, specifically because I was transforming into a kind of Chaos Turbo-y thing. It's pretty good. You get to draw cards in a deck that already draws a lot of cards. You're doing more of a Chaos Turbo impression. I am putting it low for the same reason I'm putting a lot of these other things low. If you draw it off a Rombo, you're gonna cry. You don't want to draw it during a Rombo. Each one you do is gonna really hurt you. So if you don't see them in the early game, you have to start worrying about them in the late game, which is tough. Uh, same thing goes for Swords of Revealing Light. You don't really want to draw this late game. It isn't really doing much for you, but it is worthwhile. It will help you stall. I just find that this deck doesn't really draw out spell and trap removal so quickly with the rest of what it has. So generally, they're going to have something for your swords to pop if they have anything at all. But next up is Solemn Judgment. You can play like one Solemn Judgment. And then post Rombo, you can counter something. Most of the time, this will probably just get you killed. It goes much better if you're playing Slump. It goes much better if you're playing Scapegoat. But if you're going off with these things... That Psalm's probably more win more versus something else you could be doing. Similarly, I've got Regeki Break and Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, and this is specifically in the context of the main board that I put them so low. If you want to have a copy, it is decent removal, it's a nice mix-up, it's really no good for your Ronbo. Wing Blast I put slightly higher than Break here because if you have a Heavy Slump and a Wing Blast, it does a similar thing to Psalm, but again, really not that great, really not that worth your time. Lower down we've got Royal Decree, you're already playing the three true nade. Well, what's the point of this? It's just going to make your rombos worse. Definitely worthwhile thinking about on the side, but I haven't really found any use for it. I don't really like it all that much, but it's worth mentioning. And then lastly down here, I got spell reproduction. If we're discarding two spells to do the stuff we do in this deck, we're probably going to lose. Um, I mean, I would rather just play two shallow graves than this, because that's really all this thing's going to do anyway. I mean, what else? You get a premature burial? You, you already have spy and stuff for that. This is just, it's too much. I find it to be too much. I don't think spell reproduction belongs here. I think you're probably discarding spell cards that could be doing more important things almost all of the time. So that was probably a lot of information. And I appreciate you bearing with me. But let's try to put that all together. We are playing a Chaos Turbo deck. We are removing all of the disruptive traps. We are removing all the spell and trap removal. And we are slightly augmenting the creature lineup. What we end up with is a Chaos Turbo Engine with a bunch of Empty Jar related card stuff in it. We are going to try and activate these in a time where our opponent's cards will not be able to kill us on the backswing. But if we think they will, we're trying to find Card Destruction, Premature Burial, Snatch Deal, Ring of Destruction, and Black Luster Soldier on Void at the beginning in some combination to hopefully end the game. If not, we have other possibilities such as Heavy Slump to get rid of all of their cards. We can go for Shallow Grave or some combination of that and Demok and Magician of Faith and Card Destruction to go ahead and deck them out. Sork can help them kill. And if you don't want to do that, there is a possibility of trying to use Go Control sort of stuff to slow the game down, both in the early game and the late game. Some very common patterns that you might have are Activate Cyber Jar, and then you get a Magician of Faith, a Book of Taiyu, and a Card Destruction. So you can go ahead and Card Destruction, then you can Book of Taiyu on that Magician of Faith, Card Destruction again, deck them out. Book of Taiyu also is really good with BLS, because if you see that they book something like an Assailant or a Faith that's really tiny, you can book that thing to pop it up, and then Black Luster Soldier can deal something like 5,000-something damage, which is crazy. Combo that with a ring, you are schmoovin'. You also have lines involving Premature Burial combined with Dark Magician of Chaos. With those, it's also really good to know that if you book down your Demok, it will go back to the grave when it dies and not into the Banish Zone. So if you want to do something like Premature, get it back, then you can true name that, then book it down. If it dies, you have it back again, which is quite nice. And with all of that being said and done, I think that is the basic sort of Ron Control shell. You won't really see all of this stuff in practice too well until we play it, but hopefully this has been a help. If you'd like some example list, let's go through a couple now. This is the original Ron 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 5 list. I'd say it's quite out of date. Uh, this was built pre-Worlds uh, 2021, so no one really knew how to beat Pandaburn. 
Uh, it's playing a decent amount of bricks that I don't think it needs to be playing. Again, I'm not a huge fan of Sork, let alone 2. I'm not a fan of Royal Decree, and in that context with the mind control, there's a lot of possibility for dead hands here, but the demop was great, the reincarnation was great, the sunlight and the slump are great. This is my list from the PWCQ. In hindsight, I'm not a huge fan of this either. You see we only have uh, two faiths. I hadn't figured that out yet. Uh, Dequichi at two, and Tomato was kind of awkward. I was playing the Shallow Grave. I'm playing the Book of Moon. So you can do that same trick I was talking about before. Um, all in all, this list was fine. It ended up transforming into like a chaos control sort of thing, which we'll definitely talk about more later. Then this list was the recent one that got top four at a GCI. Uh, this one went ahead and played the Gravekeeper Spy to go with the Demok and was also playing the Swords and the Tomato. So this list certainly could go a really, really, really long game. And then especially since it also transformed into Chaos Control, it can go really super duper cuckoo crazy long. Um, which is definitely an approach that's worth going for, and I mean, winning a, a top fouring at a 152 player event is certainly no joke either, so worth considering. Probably a pretty good list, but it is playing two faith, which I don't recommend. I would have made this Dekoichi into a faith, I think. And then lastly, this was my recent list I played at the FLC. I really, really liked this list a lot. Um, I found the Assailants with the Reincarnation and the Rock Bomb to do a whole lot of work. Uh, instead of playing Spy or Dekoichi to draw cards, I was using these Jar of Greeds, and I had the Tomato, because that's the main thing to move things along. So I had both Tomato and this sort of Assailant Rock Bomb engine to find my jars. I did decide to go with Sork under this framework, because I did want my Tomatoes to be dying, I did want to be discarding my Assailants. And then also, you'll see in the side, I tried to side into Chaos Turbo for the most part, so I had like a full trap lineup, Gravekeeper Spy, and also a Breaker. In the next episode, we're going to go over a couple of siding patterns and their significance, and then we'll hopefully play a couple of games with a couple of lists, and we'll see what those feel like in practice. If you guys have any questions, I am more than happy to answer any of them. If you guys are interested in playing the deck, if you have any lists you want to show me, I am so excited to see them. But for now, I have been Pui. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have a lovely day. Ron.